Not only will Playground Games continue to work on Forza Horizon, they're bringing their open world expertise to an entirely new project. We can't wait to share more about that later. At Microsoft's E3 2018 press conference, Phil Spencer, the executive president of gaming for Microsoft, made it very clear that Xbox are focusing on bringing a plethora of exclusive first party titles to the console. With the announcement of first party studios Microsoft had purchased and even started from scratch, as well as the focus on games at their conference, it is obvious this is Microsoft's intent and that excites me. Sony has been dominating the gaming market with not just many first party exclusives, but ones that are of the highest quality in this generation of consoles. So Xbox have been planning, preparing and working to counter Sony with hopefully a few good shots of their own. One of which, as you saw at the top of this video, was not announced but teased as an open world game that Playground Games is working on outside of their current Forza Horizon 4 project. That unannounced game, based on many reports and some deeper analysis, is most likely the resurgence of the much beloved Xbox exclusive franchise, Fable. I not only think Playground Games are working on Fable 4, but I also think it very well might be Microsoft's best answer to Sony from the 2017 and 2018 bestsellers Horizon Zero Dawn and God of War respectively. Before we get into the probable development of the new Fable game from Playground Game Studios, I want to briefly talk about the history of the Fable franchise and why it has been 8 years since its last main installment, Fable 3. Fable was created and developed by UK game developer Lionhead Studios, but in March of 2016, it was announced that the longtime Fable developer Lionhead Studios would close down, and the forthcoming Fable game they were developing, Fable Legends, was cancelled. Fable Legends was meant to be a multiplayer Fable experience, however the development seemed to be riddled with issues that inevitably led to the game's cancellation and Lionhead's shutdown. It was sad to see, as a longtime Fable fan who chooses to remember the good times of Lionhead Star franchise. The original Fable was one of my all time favourite gaming experiences. The game brought the new magical world of Albion to the Xbox, and edged its place in Microsoft's catalogue of exclusives, in my opinion, as one of its all time best. The franchise gave us players the power to make choices in the game that would affect the world and make it our own story, our own Albion. This magical and mystical RPG continued to grow with its sequel Fable 2, set 500 years after the events of Fable 1. The game was a great success for the Xbox 360 and Microsoft overall. It built on what made the first game great without losing the core essence of what made Fable special, its lore, its world and unduplicable humour. Fable 3 released to a little more fan divisiveness than the previous sequel, though it ultimately in my opinion is a fun Fable game in its own right though definitely the weakest game of the franchise up to that point. I believe at the time it was clear for the Fable franchise that it needed a bit of rejuvenation, whether it be go back to its more RPG roots, going back in time to in and around the era of Fable 1, but instead of that, two years after the release of Fable 3, in 2012 Lionhead Studios released a totally on-rails Kinect game called Fable The Journey, and for me as a fan I started to realise that Fable may very well be done for. Longtime Fable creator Peter Molyneux even left Microsoft and Linehead Studios during the development of Fable The Journey. It just seemed to be one disaster after another for the Fable franchise, which continued for years following until the studio's closing. It looked to be the end of Fable altogether during the time of Linehead's closing. There were other publishers though, and companies after the purchase of the studio. Kotaki UK writer Keza McDonald reported on the story back in May of 2016, stating, quote, There were in fact several potential buyers lined up for the studio during its consultation period, the span of time mandated by UK law during which a company must explore options before shutting down, end quote. Continuing on as to why the studio was not successfully sold, saying, quote, One source close to Xbox claims it's because Microsoft would not sell the Fable IP along with the studio, despite offers that were in the range of hundreds of millions. 90% of people interested just walked away at that point, said the source, end quote. Since it was not just the studio the publishers were after, but the Fable IP, which remained valuable to Xbox, if not to make games with, at the very least not to allow other publishers to profit off of it. 
So it looked like at that point we'd had the last of the Fable franchise, as Lionhead Studios was officially gone. While well, it may be the last we were ever going to hear of Lionhead Studios, it was not the last time we've heard of Fable. In January of 2018, Eurogamer deputy editor Wesley Yin Poole first reported that sources close to Microsoft revealed that a new Fable game is in development under a new studio. That studio being Playground Games, the Forza Horizon developer. Not just a Fable game though, but one in its traditional single player style. Yin Poole reported, quote, We've heard the new Fable is planned as a story and character focused open world action RPG. A significant investment in its development is also planned, with some 200 people set to work on the game at Playground's newly established second office at Leamington Spa, Warwickshire." End quote. For any longtime Fable fan, this is exciting news. To hear reports earlier this year that Fable is coming back and being developed by another UK studio, and to then, at E3 of 2018, to have it revealed that Playground Games is in fact working on an open world secret game project further demonstrating the believability of Yin Poole's report. It should not go unnoticed the importance as well of a Fable game being developed by another UK studio. A massive part of Fable's identity is its very Britishness. The humour, the characters, its world. So to know that it most likely is being developed by an accomplished British studio is a great first step to me. It's also worth noting the reasoning for Microsoft's decision for bringing back Fable from the dead. In Yin Poole's report, he states, quote, We've heard Microsoft's rekindled interest in Fable was in part inspired by Sony's phenomenal success with Guerrilla Games' PlayStation 4 exclusive Horizon Zero Dawn, end quote. This is nothing new. I've been hearing for some time that Microsoft has been working to build a game that is inspired by Horizon and its success from developer Guerrilla Games. In fact, there was a recruiter based in the UK named Sandor Roberts that was looking on LinkedIn for lead environmental artists for a Microsoft next-gen AAA title that was, quote, style similar to Horizon Zero Dawn, end quote. So this whole story definitely seems to be fitting together of a Fable game being developed by Playground Games and is a result of the success of Horizon Zero Dawn. If it is all true, it is interesting to note that Microsoft are even taking the same development direction, using a studio known for a completely different game franchise that is of a completely different genre. Guerrilla Games used to make the first person shooter Killzone, then made Horizon Zero Dawn. He have Playground Games, who were famous for making an open world racing game, and now would be making an open world fantasy role playing game. It all certainly seems believable to me, and the quote from Phil Spencer at the top of this video all but confirmed the reports for me. Fable 4 is inevitable. Phil Spencer himself is a fan of the franchise, tweeting back in 2017 in response to a Fable query, quote, Nothing to announce right now, but I do think the IP has a lot of places it could go, end quote. I agree, Phil. I agree. So let's move on from whether it is confirmed or not, and end this video discussing what this game could look like. And if Microsoft are trying to compete with Sony and the success of Horizon Zero Dawn, then we could have the best Fable game of all time on our hands. To me, whenever I see competition, I see an opportunity for us as consumers to get the best products. These companies want to outdo each other, and that requires both patience and execution. The patience being, I don't expect to see Fable 4 until the next generation of consoles, 2020 or 2021 at the earliest. By execution, I mean we're going to get something massive as Fable fans. I may be setting my expectations high here, but if you tell me you're trying to make a game competing with Horizon Zero Dawn, which in my mind is one of the best games I've ever played, then I expect you to deliver something huge. So what could that game be? In terms of things I want to change or add, the first step in my mind is to have a massive open world Albion, meaning no region loading screens, just a beautiful, colourful, sometimes terrifying world free to roam around in our own pace. The second thing is bring us back in time, before Fable 2 or 3, back when magic and heroes were not just stories of myth in this world, but legends that saved Albion. Fable 1 built a world where magic and heroes were common, and were part of a guild designed to help people in need, where you can delve into ruins of the old kingdom, explore the lush, undisturbed countryside filled with magical creatures, and visit towns of people in need of a hero. I'd love to see that Albion again, for it to feel more magical and mystical, to not yet be industrialised, where you aren't just a lone chosen hero, but one of many, who has to prove yourself above the rest to become a legend. 
One where destiny isn't the defining factor of the storyline, but growth and character development is, both story-wise and gameplay-wise. I'd also want to see difficulty and consequence brought into the Fable franchise in terms of gameplay. Games like Horizon Zero Dawn, God of War, among others, have difficult challenges and gameplay moments. Have combat be challenging. Have boss battles be hard. And definitely have it be so you can lose. Not just to have you auto-revive and be unkillable like in Fable 2 or 3. There has to be more challenge and depth to gameplay. That includes exploration, as well as the combat. In terms of things that I feel need to remain, there's quite a few. The first has to be the decisions that players make matter to the world. What makes Fable so special is sometimes even the smallest choices wind up having big consequences to the story, characters in the world, and beyond. Another very important thing that needs to remain is the humour of Fable. That's such a large part of its charm, its Monty Python-esque approach to humour and characters, where the game doesn't always take itself too seriously and can at times have a good laugh at itself. It is what makes Fable such a charming game. I'd also love to see Teresa back. If we have a game set between Fable 1 and 2, there was always room there, I feel, for her to be in the game. I think she's such an interesting character and staple to the franchise. It would really make it feel like a Fable game having her in some kind of role in it. So that's it from me for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. Are you excited for Fable 4? And what features would you like to see the franchise's return as a single player RPG have? Let me know down in the comments below and I will see you guys very soon for more Fable videos that I will be doing throughout the development over the next several years of the game until it's announced and until it's released in fact. So guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you later.